Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome to the family. So today I brought us new content, so stay tuned. I think you'll love it. Please remember to give this video a big thumbs up. Remember to subscribe, turn the alarm on, and share it with your friends and families. Also, comment down below what, what content you would like me to do next. All right, let's get started with the video. I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with the character like the one I just portrayed. If not, I'm pretty sure all of you has watched a video of a YouTuber on YouTube. YouTube is the world's second largest search engine, the world's second most visited site after Google, and the second most popular social media platform with 1.9 billion users. During my junior year, YouTube has been a friend of mine, but also an enemy. Here's why. YouTube has so many entertaining videos that kept my attention captivated. I would spend hours on it because I really enjoyed being in a state of not having to worry about anything and being fully immersed in the video. However, <clears throat> the recommended videos would always lure me into thinking, oh, I'll just watch five more minutes. I promise this will be my last video for the day. Then I would catch myself saying the exact same thing for the next two to three hours. The result of this was not so good. First, this led to major procrastination. I was putting things off to the last minute possible. I got too lazy to go and hang out with people I loved. And most importantly, I had no self-control. My priority was not, in the, not set in the right direction. I knew in my head that spending hours on a screen watching videos was not going to do me much good. However, that didn't really stop me. Chris Jami, an American poet, said, an overindulgence of anything, even something as pure as water, can intoxicate. And surely, that was the case for me. It was affecting my sleep schedule, my social life, my spiritual life, my self-confidence, and my academics. As the usage of technology is increasing, the usage of YouTube is also increasing, which creates a higher chance of negative exposure. When I was researching about the topic of YouTube, three things appealed significantly to me, and those were YouTube addiction, YouTube's impact on the teenage brain, and YouTube's impact on the emotional well-being. YouTube is increasingly being used for communicating, learning, collaborating, or creating, and entertainment, but for some, it has become a potential compulsive habit that leads to problematic addiction. There are two types of user activities on YouTube platform, content sharing and content seeing, and YouTube addiction can happen for both parties. The increased usage as well as the constant and continuous stream of videos can potentially result in an addictive behavior. First off, YouTubers are slowly becoming a full-time job because of the time it takes to produce high-quality videos. In order, for, in order for them to draw more attention and earn more money, the higher the quality has to be. This will lead the YouTubers to focus on the number of likes, the number of comments, subscribers, and most importantly, the number of views. As for the viewers, the recommended sections are the ultimate temptation. YouTube uses artificial intelligence, also known as AI, to recommend videos for the users, but the problem is AI is not there to help you get what you want. It's built to get you addicted to YouTube. Recommendations were designed to waste your time. Therefore, more views will lead to a better algorithm where YouTube will calculate the amount of time you spend on each video, which will lead to recommendations that are hard to resist, which will finally lead you to spend more time on YouTube. Sometimes the reason behind these addictions can be that the users are afraid of missing out. They want to stay up with all the trends so that they'll fit in with others and won't feel left out in any way. Some may be that they are lonely, which might cause them to YouTube, turn to YouTube and isolate themselves from the real world while neglecting other responsibilities and other aspects of their life. 
But by doing that, they're making it worse. Anxiety and loneliness can start kicking in, as well as mood swings. Research has proven that on the extreme end, nearly half of teens who indicated that they spend five or more hours of screen time a day, such as phone or laptop, said they have contemplated, planned, or attempted suicide at least once, compared with 28% of those who have had less than one hour of screen time a day. This will undeniably include the time spent in front of a screen watching YouTube videos. Losing track of time due to watching YouTube videos may also lead to sleep deprivation, which puts people at a risk of serious medical condition, including obesity, heart disease, and diabetes, and it shortens life expectancy as well. This is just one of the many negative results that come out from YouTube addiction. Seeing the same thing on a computer screen and going out there and experiencing it yourself are two different things. Addiction to YouTube will certainly limit the user to have face-to-face -face interactions with other people as well. And that leads to social difficulties. As more videos are being watched every day, the risks of YouTube addiction are happening fast, which puts mental health in danger. Teenagers' brains are found to be more vulnerable and volatile because their brains are not fully developed yet. Teenagers' brain undergoes considerable neural growth and pruning, which create changes of connectivity within and between brain regions. Their brains simultaneously go through changes such as the interwining of the brain structure, connectivity, and behavior, which are directly needed to support sophisticated thinking and emotional regulation. The most widely studied changes in the teenage brain take place in the prefrontal cortex, which is located behind the forehead and associated with planning, problem solving, conscious choices, and other executive functions. During healthy brain, teenage brain development, the prefrontal cortex communicates more fully and effectively with other parts of the brain, including areas particularly associated with emotion and impulses. This is why teenagers are more prone to outside influence. When teenagers start to experience stress or fear due to these media platforms, they may underdevelop parts of their brain's prefrontal cortex and frontal lobe. This is a huge danger to teenagers due to the fact that their brain is still in the developing stage. If they don't go through healthy brain development, it may affect them in the long run when they reach adulthood. Teens these days are watching TV less and are using YouTube more, which causes teenagers to relate to YouTubers more than traditional celebrities. A factor of human nature that causes teenagers to have negative emotional problems is comparisons. Seeing all these YouTubers live a perfect, ideal life can make teens feel ungrateful and displeased with their life. A lot of YouTubers post videos on fashion hauls where they buy thousands worth of dollars worth of clothing, shoes, accessories, and makeup. This can make the viewers feel not content of what they have. When narrowed down to female users, when they look at other female YouTubers, they always notice their makeup, their skin condition, their fashion, their body, and just overall their appearances and tend to be jealous from those. This continuous comparison with others is a major trigger of plummet in self-esteem. Low self-confidence, stress, and depression might be things that tag along when a user starts to compare oneself with others. The line between real and fake is blurred sometimes due to these YouTubers hiding the behind stories of their life. Just seeing the bright and the happy sides of life may cause the viewers to compare their life with the YouTubers which makes them realize how bad of a life they have, and that lowers their self-esteem. Children and teens usually have a harder time than adults to distinguish reality from the masks these YouTubers put on. Due to this, teenagers and young children are often deceived into believing something that is false. These factors pull them down emotionally. This example, as well as other research, have shown that the spike in the amount of time teenagers spend on screens is likely a cause of the ongoing surge in depression, 
anxiety, and suicide that began shortly after smartphones and tablets became widespread in 2012. As the usage of these technology has increased, the usage of YouTube and other social media also increased. Some people might argue that they do not have a problem with comparison and that they are very satisfied with their life. But a UK study found that if people spent a lot of time on social media, they are more likely to display a negative, negative personality traits such as narcissism, snapping endless selfies, posting all the thoughts or details about life, can create an unhealthy self-centeredness, distancing oneself from real-life relationships, and making it harder to cope with stress. Even though people might not feel like they are being influenced, studies have shown that whether they are aware of it or not, social media, including YouTube, has an effect on their behavior in several different ways. Like these examples mentioned above, there are major effects to mental health through YouTube. Again, if, even if someone says that they don't have a problem, the fact that they spend a lot of time on these platforms contradict the statement. A new term that was introduced recently is called sad fishing, which is a term used for people who post emotional things online to get attention. There's no definitive way to tell if someone is truly in crisis, so any alarming post should be taken seriously. However, Due to previous influencers and YouTube posting, posting things that are super exaggerated and lying about their emotional status, whenever users share their personal emotional stories, it is sometimes seen as a way to get attention. Troubled teens who genuinely seek support online feel worse when other users suggest that they are simply just trying to get attention. This does not help the teenagers who might be dealing with serious distress and is just trying to seek help. It simply puts them in a position where they are mocked and ridiculed for their sincerity. For one part of my project, I conducted a survey against adult high school students, and I was very pleased to see that out of the 132 students that replied, the results were mostly positive. When asked about the hours spent on YouTube per day, on average, the majority said an hour or less, and so on. The majority of the students are spending quite a reasonable time on YouTube, which was very good to see. However, during the weekends, the number significantly went up, as shown in this graph above. The results were flipped upside down when compared to the one before. When rounded up, it was shown that 49% of students only sometimes keep track of time. 35% said that they don't, keep a they don't keep track of time at all, and the rest, 17%, said they do. 72 students went on to express their thoughts on how certain videos have made them feel jealous, ungrateful, and compared, while the rest stated that they have never felt that way before. As a person who has conducted a study on the negative sides of YouTube, I was very happy to see that most Delot high school students were not as negatively influenced as I thought. Again, I'm not standing here today to say YouTube is horrible and you should never use it. I'm here to inform you that YouTube is becoming a bigger source of entertainment and is taking up much of our time. And if we aren't careful, it can affect us to the extreme end. So to end off, I would like to give you a few tips on what I do to help myself limit the time. First, I turn on the break reminder. In the settings panel, you are able to pick how long you want to be on YouTube, and if the time runs out, YouTube will notify you to take a break. This has helped me prevent YouTube from taking away my time without me even noticing. Second, I silence the alarm for the channels I subscribe to. Since it lessens the visual temptations, it was easier for me to not open YouTube and start watching the videos. Third, I delete my YouTube history and sometimes pause them as well. This will lessen the chance for YouTube to recommend videos I'll want to watch. Just following these three steps has helped me tremendously. As our society is slowly becoming more and more media consuming, and as people are being involved even from a very young age, 
It is our personal responsibility to not, to not let these overtake our balanced and healthy life. As Doug Stanhope, an American stand-up comedian, said, there's no such thing as addiction. There are only things you enjoy more than life. We should always remind others and ourselves that the things in life that are worth remembering are over the screens. Don't let YouTube control you. Rather, you control YouTube. Thank you.